want to know about the people who join me now. They're called Bill, Jay and Steve Gribble, Ben Jones, Nigel Fortune and John Harris and together they make up the Gloucester-based band Anastasia. Mor Anastasia? I can't, <laughs> I mean, oh God, I'm so excited to hear you. Your voice is gone. Morning, guys. How are you? Morning. Morning. Now then, Bill, you're, you're going to be the spokesman. So start off by telling us a, a bit about Anastasia then. Well, we, we were formed... Uh, Good grief, what was it? 1992. 1992. <laughs> it's been that long. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, guitar-based rock. Most of it's our own stuff. Well, all of it's our own stuff. We've, uh, we're working really just to gig, you know? It's, it's all about playing live. It's all about getting the music out to other people. So it's, it's, a, um, it's a passion, should we say. I've talked to, to one of my friends who's in a band called Titanic up in Stroud. Um, Ed Butcher, his name is. And he, I, I said you're a rock group. He said you'll probably find they describe themselves as, as folk rock. So, so how do you describe yourselves? Folk rock is, yeah, yeah, folk rock's probably close enough. It's difficult because you're playing your own stuff all the time. So it's, it's hard to put a label on it. I don't like labels as a, as a rule. Um, but it's, I, I guess it's the best way to, to classify it is to come along to the gig and listen. That's the very best way to find out. Do you classify yourself, look at you do it. But did you start off as, as, as a folk group then? No, no, it started off um, <laughs> with a lonely boy full of teenage angst and nothing but a guitar and a couple of poems um, <coughs> in, a, in a dusty room far out in the Middle East wishing he had a band. Um, then, we came back, then, then we came back to the UK. Uh, and met a few people. We uh, got together at the Gods down in Barton Street. Yeah. That was the that was the very first time over um, a 24 hour sort of comics um, comic relief session. And um, so basically, we had two guitars then. So it wasn't just a lonely at teenage angst boy anymore. And uh, and just a load of poems that just went to the music. And we taught Jamie to play the bass, and we just went from there. So again, we didn't start off with a sort of we're going to play folk rock, we're going to play indie rock. It just came together. With yourself, Jay and Steve, it sounds like a little bit of a family affair, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's almost um, an accident. Uh, it's, uh, I suppose Jamie is the best example of that. Well, Jamie was an accident. <laughs> 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 ja yeah, as I say, Jay, ja 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 my brother's the, the best example. It, it's, it's like uh, myself and oh, the, the other original member, Lee, he isn't with us anymore. Uh, we, we needed... Uh, I suppose we needed bass and drums, and, and bass guitarists and, and drummers are hard. I mean, nobody in their right mind lets their kid learn to play drums. I mean, who's going to buy their kid a drum set? That's right. Christmas? <laughs> and bass is, You can't well, practice quietly, really, on drums. You've got oh, practice no, pads, can't you? No, no, I think Nigel's parents locked him out in the garage when he was young. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like the bass was... Uh, I mean, who wants to learn bass? Everybody wants to be a lead guitarist, don't they, Ben? That's right, mate. <laughs> so we, um, we just, like, found... Um, one of my old acoustic guitars took two of the strings off, gave it to Jamie and said, play that note here, you know, and, uh, and he learned to play the bass and he now teaches us how to write the music. And so the acoustic bass is going in today, oh, no, I've never seen that before, I've never really ever seen electric basses, but there we are, <laughs> an acoustic bass, sounds brilliant. Tell me a bit about the success you've had over the years then, because you've done very, very well. Oh, it's, it's been like, um, it's been like a dream come true, we've, we've gone from one peak to the other, it seems every year's different, I mean, we, we won the Battle of the Bands one year and ended up playing in Earl's Court. Uh, we've played most of the, the London sort of spots you can think of, like the Marquee and the Mean Fiddler. Um, but, uh, I don't know, I reckon it's still, still some of the best gigs are some of the ones closer to home, like there's uh, the Horseshoe down in Down End, to, to fill out a room that isn't that much bigger than the studio with about 100 people. And just to Amazing hear them, atmosphere. Like, cheer, it's brilliant. There's nothing like it. It's the whole reason for doing it. And, of course, you hit the headlines last year when you became one of the first bands to be selected to market your, your work on a music industry-backed website. So oh, you're, yeah. You're, you're people really Sound, yeah. 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 People Sound's brilliant. It's, uh, uh, you, you, uh, we've had um, a sort of a web presence for a long time, and uh, you get used to, to all being inundated by the sharks, so to speak. And um, I've got to admit, I was cynical when, when we were first approached by them, but... Uh, They've proved me wrong. They're, they're excellent. They, they, they put their, their money where their mouth is and they really push the music. Which now, I understand good. so far you've, on, you've only toured the UK, but the, there's a planned tour of uh, Germany coming up in, in the autumn, <laughs> and then I, I, I've heard maybe New York? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, we, we, we linked up. We, we did a gig um, at the George down in Chipping Sodbury about, must be about a year ago, maybe a bit more. It was a, a Tuesday on a Christmas, and we, we said to them, you don't want us playing on a Tuesday. Uh, it's like, no, we're going to put music on every night of the week. No, really, Tuesday, you don't want, you don't want us on a Tuesday. So we, we played Tuesday, and there were six people in the audience. And this was... Two of those six people were, um, were Nick of Madrigal Records. Uh, it's a small independent label based out in the forest. 
Um, I think it's the forest. I don't really pay much attention to where he comes from. But he had a nice car and he, he talks a lot. Um, but, uh, and he breaks his computer all the time. But um, <laughs> so, so basically, we, we linked up with, with Nick, and since then we've had all sorts of interest, um, a lot of which comes, has come from abroad. So we've got Europe and, and the States. Uh, I think the States were all scheduled out for like autumn this year, but then this Germany sort of European thing came up, and so it's all moving around. But to be honest, that I just, like I say, I turn up at the gig and I play. So but having I, never played there, how come you've got a, a fan club in Australia? <laughs> well, it started off with, um, from what I understand, a girl out there did like a search. You know how you, you sort of get onto the web and you, you, you type your name into the search engine just to look for what links you can find. And uh, she came across this band with her name. And uh, so she sort of hacked into our website. And um, the next thing we know, we're being inundated by mails and she set up like a mailing list and, and we're getting radio time and all sorts over there just Tremendous. because That's she just brilliant. was in love with the music, you know? And you're very, very busy because I understand you've done over 500 live performances in just the past few years. Yeah. I was trying to work out. I mean, that's like two or three a week almost. It, it averages out at two or three a week. I mean, sometimes you get like um, a week off. Like we had last week off, but we'll have like three sort of all in a row next week, maybe more the week after. It's just... Uh, absolute chaos sometimes but it's what we do so are, are you hoping to make it big you know like other gloucester bands i mean emf springs to mind straight away but i mean would you like that you know to get on like that <laughs> i mean i don't know what they're doing these days whether they've folded <laughs> up stopped or what so perhaps we're talking about the wrong ones but would you like right. to be big it's, uh, i i suppose Yes, yes, I suppose. You're being no, prompted I, I here, Bill. We, we can't, I, I don't think any of us can really see ourselves doing anything different for the rest of our lives, you know? Um, to actually uh, make it big, it, it's, it's like to fill a room that's maybe the size of this with 100 people and have that sort of a crowd. Imagine filling Wembley or, or Rio or something like that, you know? Uh, it's, yes, I mean, the bigger the better. And I, and I suppose the other the other temptation is if you get that big and you're filling huge stadiums, you can you can get rich pretty quick, and then you can really do what you want to do because you find all bands oh. I mean, they, they they do what they start off doing, and then over the years as they get the money and they say right, I don't need to do that anymore. I don't need to make the money well, now. We can do what we really want. There's two sides to it. I mean, I suppose we all really want to be free, and the only freedom you really get, though, I suppose some people would argue, would be money. Lots of money, so you've got no worries whatsoever. That would be really nice, and is one of my ambitions. Um, but you, it's the freedom to do what you want, and we're already doing what we want. It's just to do more of it, you know? So it's, it's not just, well, it's, it's a cliche. Jamie's going to kick me in the back in a moment because he's in it for the money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Get him away! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, you, you can't, if, if we were just in it for the money, we'd have folded a long time ago. Uh, I mean, 1992, none of us have seen anything back from the band. It's all ploughed back into the band so that, uh, so that we could... I mean, we had our, our own sort of... Tr we've always had our own transport. We've uh, The band pays for the strings. We've built our own studio, you know, so it's it's all about ploughing it back in. So what's gone on is down to you. That's the main thing. It is. It's your achievement, and, and you can take credit yeah. from it and take pleasure from it. Well, it, it, it was... Um, it's already achieved everything. It's Everything that it's going to do from now on is just extra. I mean, the original idea was just to play with somebody else, you know? Uh, I don't know how that sounds, <laughs> <laughs> but it was just to... I just, think I know what you mean, yeah, yes. Yeah, it's just, it was just like, let's just have, um, a, 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 will you shut up? <laughs> let's just have, like, a, a session. Let's, uh, right, we've, we've got, like, this song and we've got lots of people playing on it. We've created something. We could have a gig. Let's do a gig. We've had a gig. Our first gig was um, opposite, the, uh, what's the gate in um, Eastgate Street? And that was like every ambition achieved. And then it's like, well, no, let's play the Welsh harp in Gloucester. We did that. And it, it's just, it just comes, you know? It's, it's brilliant. Now, you're going to play uh, acoustically for us today. I mean, is that strange for you? It's a little weird. I mean, it's... I suppose that they're, they're, my instrument's the acoustic guitar anyway, so from my point of view, it's, it's, um, if, if I write a song separate from the band, I'll write it on the acoustic so it's not that different, but I suppose as a group we tend to make a lot of noise very loud, um, and so it is a little different, but it's been fun, hasn't it? Yeah, it's, sure. it's actually... Tell me, I'd like you to do two songs for us if you could. I know we only, I think we only mentioned one, but if you could do two and uh, somebody could think, <laughs> think very quickly on we'll the feet while you're, while you're playing, yeah. well, what the second might be. Um, Understand the first one's going to be called Over Me. Tell me about that. It's, uh, it's, it's one of our newest songs. It's, it's off the new album. Um, it's, I think, one of our favourites at the moment. It's, it's a song about vulnerability, but in a good way. So it's, it's uh, 
the closest I ever come to writing a happy song. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about the new album if we can, uh, after you've sung it for us, yeah. and um, go on to that then. So if you'd like to prepare yourself, Bill, we'll, uh, we'll get yourselves ready. Cool. And I'll introduce you to Anastasia, the Gloucester band who are performing at the Guildhall Arts Centre on Thursday. Kicks off at 8 o'clock, and this is uh, composed by the band as a whole, and it's called Over Me. Tremendous. I'm going to let that fade right to the very end. I enjoyed that so much. <laughs> I was over me, and the band is called Anastasia. They're playing at the uh, Guildhall Arts Centre on Thursday. Starts at 8 o'clock, and absolutely brilliant. Bill, we were going to talk about um, the, the old album and the new album. I say the old album, your first album, debut album, <laughs> and the new one coming up. But just tell me how often you have to practice and how long you practice. I know you arrive very early, and you've been in our big studio, yeah. and you've all been tuning yeah. up, and you've been, you know, talking to uh -huh. each other and tinkering. How much practice does it take to get that good? Oh, it's... Or do you play... The fact you play three times a week, is that is well, that effectively practice as well? Sometimes you play three times a week and then you've got... I mean, we've been, for the last year, working on the new album, so you have to record as well. So that doesn't count as part of the gigs or the practice. But we, we usually practice once a week, religiously. Um, it's, uh, this, the session lasts, many think, from about three to, three to sort of four hours. Um, if there's something different, like we have to, to convert one of the songs to an acoustic number, then we'll, we'll pick a day, like we, we all sat around in the sun on Sunday, Sunday afternoon in the garden, and just 
did a session. And now I've, I've thrown you by, by saying, you know, would you do a second one for us? Or would you like to, if you could, do you think you can? Oh, we can. Would yeah. you Would you like to just yeah. tell the guys what it might be, or would somebody like like to think what it might be? So you've got a couple we'll of. Do Lucy. Yeah. All right, we'll do. Yeah, we'll do Lucy. Lucy. Okay. Well, let's talk about the albums now, then, because your debut album was called Yesterday Tomorrow. Tell me a bit yeah. about that and when that came out. It was. Uh, it was what 1990. Five, 96. 96, oh. 97. That's funny how the years are. <laughs> <laughs> <beginning laughs> <to feel laughs> so time flies when you're enjoying yourself. <laughs> so you'd waited, you'd, you'd, you'd been together five years. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, um, we recorded yes, um, yesterday, tomorrow, literally as, as Ben had just mm -hmm. joined us at the time because we'd lost um, Matt, the guitarist, um, before him. Um, He'd uh, decided to go off with, <laughs> it seems he, he went off with um, the old drummer and they, they started a band called Tinderbox. They're doing very well, though I think Matt's now going off to Australia or something, so that's all <laughs> nice. But, but it, the last album was, we'd been recording, you know, the, sort of like the, the, the typical demo. We'd been going down to a place toward, um, in Bath called Nam Studios. Lovely place, brilliant sort of... Uh, um, excellent facilities in the middle of all this countryside. Uh, it's, it was just, we were almost doing it just to treat ourselves. But we were sort of spending like an entire day and a night, sort of, a, a sort of an 18 hour stint, just recording a track, mixing it, and then sending it off sort of pretty much ad hoc to whoever would listen to it. And we just thought, let's just do a live set and record an album, you know, have something to sell. And uh, so we all sort of sat down there. The, in fact, the first song on the album was. Uh, written in there. I'd written it the night before and I just said, oh, let's sound check this and, and they just thought, oh, well, that sounded quite good. Let's put it onto the, onto the album. So it was one of those spontaneous things and people keep asking us to play it at gigs and <laughs> we can't, don't seem to be able to recreate it. But, um, but yeah, that was very much yesterday's tomorrow. It was, it but was... it must, must be a great achievement once you get it down and there it is, you know, you've got it, it's there forever, you know, and, and you've done something and, it's, and, and you are recorded and you stay. Yeah, the thing is, you, you're recording it and you put all this time and effort into it and by the time you walk out, you, you don't want to hear it again. You're, so, you're not, but it's, it's your, you're shell-shocked by it. But the nice bit is when you sort of, like, six weeks later, you remember all the mistakes you've made and you think, <laughs> oh, this is going to be really bad and then don't let, make sure nobody's around. Car, the driving in the car's brilliant. Car stereo, dead, pri dead private. And you stick it in and you suddenly think, that's actually quite good. Uh, it's, and it, then you've got something as, I mean, yesterday's tomorrow is quite old now. It's, it's a few years. Um, but it is like our last album, so it's still around. And it's when you've um, you've walked into to a, a pub or a venue, and you hear something on on the on the on the jukebox, and your first reaction is when they play something of yours, is you wince. You think, oh my god, everybody's going to hear the mistakes. And actually, you think, no, no, that sounds quite neat. You know. It's... Now your your new album, I understand you're going to complete on Thursday. Does that does that mean you finish yeah. recording on Thursday, or are you going to record something at the gig live, or what? <laughs> <laughs> or is it just launched on Thursday? Uh, we've we've done most of the recording now. Uh, John, um, it's it's uh, this one's different. As far as yesterday, tomorrow was very much. Um, we sat down, we we turned the mics on, we recorded it live, uh, and it was done over a weekend in effect. Uh, whereas this time round, uh, John um, is. Uh, I suppose uh, more, not so much our recording engineer, but more our producer at the moment. He's, uh, he's really changed the, the band around just in his input over the last 12 months. Um, and uh, so he's currently sort of uh, mixing it and, and cutting bits in and cutting bits out. Every so often you get a phone call, come and fix the lyrics, sing this again, yeah? <laughs> um, I think we finished writing the last song literally in the studio whilst we were trying. That was what, last Sunday? Or Go Saturdays, ahead. though. But this one, unlike uh, the other, which was literally bang done, uh, we've put a lot of time and effort into creating not so much trying to recreate our live sound, but to do what we really want to do with the song, you know? So it's actually representing the song and the band and what we're actually aiming for, as opposed to just, like, a, tr uh, a, a trophy to sell at gigs. So what's this one going to be called? Uh, we're still arguing. Uh, <laughs> I uh, wonder if that might be the case. We've, we've narrowed it down to, to four possible album covers and two possible titles. It's either going to be um, Suburban, which I think is a little cliched, but it's got a certain ring to Body it. Study. Um, <laughs> or <laughs> or uh, Blue Sky, which is my favourite at the moment. So the best thing that can happen is, will it be decided by Thursday? Because if everybody comes along to the gig, <laughs> perhaps you can tell them on Thursday. Yeah, it'll be decided by Thursday. By Thursday we'll have it decided. The album, uh, We'd have narrowed it down to the album cover. I, I like the one with the four colours on. You know, right. Well, record. that's the answer, isn't it? Anybody that comes along on, on Thursday to see you at the Guildhall Arts Centre, they can ask you. They have you sorted it out yet? Yeah. Yeah. So they can buy it. Well, actually, they can buy it, yeah. Well, that's what buy it as well. Absolutely. Yeah. That, see, there's the business. He's the one who wants the money. What's his name? Uh, that's Jamie. Jamie, uh, yeah, Jamie he's after the, the money. Player. Yeah, good yeah. thinking, Jamie. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a bit about the, the, the second song you're going to do for us, which is called Lucy. This one's uh, 
this one's a bit older. It's, um, I suppose it's, it's a, a song about, um, about poetry um, or about a poet. And uh, it's actually, um, it's on the new album. It's, we've, we've tried a number of times before to actually record it and release it on something, but it, we've always failed in the recording. It's never come out as we wanted it. And so this time with John's help, I think we've got it. So it's almost nice that we're, we're doing it today. Lovely. Bill, if you'd like to pick up your guitar, thank you very much indeed. Let me introduce you once again then to Anastasia. If you want to go and see them live, it's BBC Music Live. You can see them at the Guildhall Arts Centre on Thursday evening at 8 o'clock. This will be on their new album, and this is called Lucy. It's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. She'll stare at the flames till I guess what she means And she's talking in fancy and living on dreams She's dealing in idle distraction, it seems But I would trade places in seconds, I think To live in abstraction, quite lost in my dreams Stretch circles in sand and her words to charm birds from the air. Dreaming in color you can't understand. Cause she's dreaming the dream that you're already there. But she says the picture.
as Bill, Jay, Steve, Ben, Nigel and John, who make up the band Anastasia. Gentlemen, thank you very, very much indeed. You, you. And you can hear Anastasia at the Guildhall Arts Centre on Thursday. They start at 8 o'clock and go along and ask them about their new album.